Hello guys. So today's video is going to be a little bit different. It might not appeal to most of my subscribers, but this was actually requested and I thought I could provide some value for once in my life. So I'm going to be showing you how to make a funny and engaging video on YouTube using Adobe Premiere Pro. So the first thing that I do before I even start my rough cut is I sync my audio to my video. So I actually use a little lav mic. So what you're going to do is once you have your audio and your video in your project, you're just going to select all by just literally clicking and dragging, right click and hit synchronize. Then you're going to make sure that the audio is selected and hit OK. It'll just think for a second. And as you can see, now it is matched. So now I'm just going to show you a little time lapse of how I start my first rough cut, which is literally just going through all of the footage. You're going to cut out whatever you don't want in the video. So for example, ums and ahs or big pauses, or if you go off on a tangent that isn't relevant, literally just you're kind of mapping out and setting up the framework for your video. I also like to really be aware of funny moments in the video because I like to start to think about how I'm going to emphasize those moments. So my general rule for the first rough cut is if you're unsure of whether to keep something Thing or get rid of it. During my first rough cut, I would definitely keep it because then in my second rough cut, which not everyone does, so that's okay. But during my second rough cut, I can then go back and really see what fits and what doesn't fit. And also I will start to put in my zooms. So zooms are very important to me. I think they're really funny if used well. So I want to show you guys an example of where I think a zoom made a moment quite funny and it emphasized what I said. My <laughs> YouTube channel is so random. Like we all know that it's just like, what is my YouTube channel? So it's not the funniest of moments. And if I hadn't done the zoom, it wouldn't have been that funny. But because I added the zoom, I think it just, it adds a little, it adds a little spice. So the first thing you want to do is watch the clip through and find the point where you want the zoom to start. And then you're going to find the point where you want the zoom to end. And we're going to add keyframes. So I'll show you what that is. It's so random. Like, we all know that it's just... So that's where I want my zoom to start because I say it's just, and then there's a big long pause. And then I say, what is my YouTube channel? So this is the start of the zoom. So I'm going to hit these two little, I think they're timers. I don't know what they are. They kind of look like bombs, but anyways, so you want to hit those two. And what that's done is added keyframes here. So then you want to keep watching the video. Like, what is my YouTube channel? So I say, like, what is my YouTube channel? So I want the zoom to end right as I say, like. So I'm going to find the spot, which is right here. And I can see that because the audio is peaking, which means that I'm speaking. That totally rhymed. <laughs> so then I'm going to hit the keyframes again, except this time I'm going to change the scale, which you can just do by swiping. You kind of like move your mouse right. Um, you can also type in numbers if you want, but... I don't know why you do that. It's better to just see what you're doing. And then you can also move the position. So this is the up and down and this is the left and right. So that looks good to me. So I'm going to go back and watch the video again. We all know that it's just like, what is my YouTube channel? A different option rather than doing a zoom is when it kind of crops in. So it would look something like this. So I'll show you how to do that really quick. So find the part where you want to change the scale. So I just take the razor tool, which is here, or you can hit C, cut that there. So once I've cut it, then I'm just gonna go and select the second clip and I'm just gonna zoom that in. It's not gonna have the same effect on this specific moment, but you'll see what I'm talking about. Oh no, that it's just like, so if I wanted to make it even funnier, I could potentially cut it again and make it zoom in even further. So I just do exactly the same thing. I'm hitting C and then I'm just changing the size. So this is what the clip now looks like. We all know that it's just like, what is my YouTube channel? So I wouldn't personally use that on that exact clip, but that's how you would do the kind of jump in cuts. I don't know what they're called. I'm going to show you my favorite effects to use that I think make certain moments quite funny. They're not going to work for everyone and they're not going to work for every clip. It's all about the way that you use them. You cannot rely on just doing a little sphere eyes effect and making it funny. That's not going to make your video funny. The effect is just a tool. It's how you use it. But I'll show you how to do them anyway because this is where I have so much fun. So we're gonna go back to the clip where I say, like, what is my YouTube channel? In hindsight, I wish I picked a different clip because it's not that funny, but anyway. The first effect is a classic. I feel like Emma Chamberlain kind of really brought this one to life and it's called Sphere Eyes. <gasps> if I was gonna use this effect, I would use it when my zoom ended. So I'm gonna find my last keyframe and you can just do this by clicking these little arrows. That's my last keyframe. So to apply the sphere eyes effect, you literally just 
move the radius little numbers to the right to make it bigger and to the left to make it smaller. So what this has done though, is it's actually applied it to the entire clip. The way that I get around this is I literally just will hit C to open the razor tool and then I'll press cut where I want the sphere eyes effect to begin. Drag the sphere eyes effect on. So that's the sphere eyes effect. I am just gonna show you a couple of my other favorites. So another great one is wave warp. So it literally just makes your face look all wavy. So many different ways you can use this. Another great little funny thing you can do is by using the tint effect. So what this does is it just makes your video black and white, but it's just literally one click. It's so, so easy. And I would usually use this during a sad moment. Oh no, this is hardened. <laughs> Of course it's hardened, it's chocolate, but why did I not expect that? Oh, do I have to reheat the kettle again? So that's how I would use it. I don't really need to demonstrate more than that. You literally just drag the tint and then you can choose some sad music and away we go. Another effect that I find really funny, and by the way, all of my favorite effects are saved here in my favorites. So you can literally just screenshot it or write them down or whatever if you are interested. So I really enjoy Magnify. Robin Pattinson is 34 years old. So this just makes something big. So for example, if I wanted to magnify my mouth, which I don't know why I find that so funny. I feel like I'm making myself sound like a not a funny person at all, which maybe I'm not, but I do think some of my edits can be funny sometimes, I hope. So what I would do is I would move the center part so that it's over my mouth and I'm probably gonna make this a little bit bigger. Then I would hit feather just so that it kind of blends and then you can see that my mouth is huge. <laughs> it's just a fun tool if you do have a moment where you're like, I would love my mouth to look enormous during this part of the video. So mosaic is another one of my favorite effects. I actually would only ever, literally only ever use mosaic with a mask. A mask basically only applies the effect to a certain masked area. So for example, if I wanted to just blur out my mouth, which I'll show you because that's how I've used it before. That's not cooked at all. I'll show you what I would do. So I would go under the mosaic effect and click this little elliptical tool. You can make masks in rectangles or you can freehand. And then I'm just gonna drag the sides down so that the mask is smaller. And my idea is just to get it to around the size of my mouth. So keep going and that looks pretty good to me. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to mask feather and I'm just gonna drag this to the right so that it's a bit more feathered. But as you can see, the mosaic effect isn't really coming into practice because my clip is so zoomed in that the effect is like massive squares rather than little tiny squares. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom of the mosaic effect and I'm gonna just go right and make these numbers bigger. So I think that looks good. So then it just kind of looks like I'm wearing or I don't know something like that another tip I have which is kind of an effect but honestly you don't really have to do much is just don't underestimate the power of cutting out the music during a funny part of dialogue so for example if I said 2020 has been an interesting year and this is when I cut out the music right before I say an interesting year 2020 has been an interesting year I just think it adds something it emphasizes the dialogue almost so definitely don't discount that and also don't discount a cheeky zoom out so i've shown you how to do zoom ins but i want to show you how to do a zoom out because honestly they can be just as funny so a great example is actually in my vlog so i'm gonna just have to google another option so my clip is like going into a hole in the universe I'm such a freak. So literally how I did this is just using keyframes again. So I keyframed the beginning and then I keyframed the end where I wanted it to go into the hole. And I literally just saw the part in the hole, made it 0% and then it just goes straight into that hole. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is audio effects because there's so much you can do with audio to make things funny, to make points stand out, but also just as a general rule, do not underestimate how important audio is. So the first one that I love is reverb. I think it's so funny. It just adds like 
a sad air to your voice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna hit C and open my razor tool. I'm just gonna cut that clip so that my effect is only being applied to this portion. Again, I could use keyframes, I can't be bothered. So my favorite form of reverb is called Studio Reverb. Again, you can just search it up here in your effects panel. So drag that onto your audio clip. Then you're gonna come over here and find the Studio Reverb effect and press edit. So this all looks really complicated, but you don't have to worry about any of that. All that you're gonna do is go up to presets and I like to use the vocal reverb large because it sounds the most dramatic. The only issue with using this particular reverb is that it actually makes the audio quieter. So what I'll do is I'll right click, click audio gain, and I'll just pop it up by two decibels. The next thing I probably overused when I first started my channel, but it is when you make your voice deeper. I don't know why this is funny. I just think it is. So I am gonna go over here and click on the pitch shifter effect. Again, just search it in your effects panel, drag it onto my audio, hit edit over here. You can use presets. So for example, you can use one called the Dark Lord, which is very, very, very deep. I prefer to just hit default and then do it myself. So if you drag it down to the left, it will make your voice lower. Like what is my YouTube channel? Which is what I would usually do because I think it's just really funny. Or if you drag it to the right, it will make your voice higher. Like what is my YouTube channel? The last audio effect that I'll show you guys is called distortion. Now I do find distortion hilarious. Actually, I'll show you again a good example of this. <laughs> So what I did is I found the part in the song that I wanted the audio to change at and I cut it. So as you can see, I've just used my C tool again and made a cut right there. So for this particular song, I actually use two different kinds of distortion. So the first one is just the regular distortion. So go here and hit edit. And my favorite is Green Room Angus, which actually is the first one that comes up, but there's literally so many. I'm actually not gonna play them because a lot of them are quite intense on your ears. So this is what Green Room Angus did. So it kind of just made it louder and also you can kind of hear a faint hissing. But for me, that wasn't actually enough. So what I did is I typed in AU distortion. So AU distortion is now on the clip as well. So then I'm just gonna go over here again, hit AU distortion, hit edit. There are so many different presets for this particular distortion effect. Feel free to play around with all of them. For this particular clip, I use the one called Radio Tower. That's the clip that you heard in my video. Another thing that I will typically do after or during the time when I'm doing my effects is sound effects. I am not gonna spend long on this because literally all that I do is I go onto YouTube, which I'll show you now. And then for example, if I wanted to get clapping, right? I would type in clapping sound effect. This is a great YouTube channel called SFX. I actually get most of my stuff from them. So literally what I'll do is I'll copy and paste this. I'll go to YouTube to MP3, which I'm not officially recommending because I feel like it's highly illegal. But anyways, it's what I do. I'll paste it in the little search bar and then I'll download. Another thing that you can download from YouTube is overlays. So I'm not gonna show you how to do this because I literally, there are not enough hours in the day. But if you wanted to get like party lights that, you know, shone over your video. Looks like something you'd eat after you came out of the club or something like that. There are so many different ways you can do that and I definitely recommend just Googling that, but overlays are another really great way to kind of make something fun or funny or just add a, a spicy little element to your videos. The last thing I wanted to show you is how to edit using a green screen because I, <laughs> when I first YouTubed it, they were like, you need to have three to four lights and you need to have it perfectly evenly lit, all of that kind of stuff. And I just could not do that because I don't have the money to be buying so many lights. I have two soft boxes, which I got from Amazon. I'll link them down below. Honestly, they're not amazing, but they do the job. And that's it, I have two lights. So I had to make that work. So what I do is I just place both of my lights kind of here and here, what would that be? 45 degree angles from my body. And I light myself as well as the green screen. That is like such a big no-no in the filmmaking world. For me, it honestly works perfectly and I'll show you how I do it. This is what my green screen looked like on the day that I shot my Harry Potter video. Yes, this is me being Voldemort. As you can tell, it's actually a mess. Like this is so unevenly lit, it's got creases in it, and it actually ended up looking really, really good in the video. His white, bald head 
was decorated with a pair of snake-like eyes. So all that I do to edit out my green screen is I use the ultra key. So you can just type in ultra key and drag this on to your clip. So you need to set your color to be green. So there's an eyedropper tool here that you want to click and drag. Sometimes you have to do it twice because it's a bit sensitive. And as you can see, the background is now black. So I've dragged in a random image and as you can see, there's still quite a lot of mess around which you can't see on the black. So I highly recommend dragging in any image underneath just so you can see what you're working with. So what I'm going to do first is try and see if this works. So honestly, it's just a process of elimination for me. So I will jump over to aggressive and see if that helps for me that did help so that's awesome and I'm gonna keep it next I just work my way down these settings here so what you literally want to do is play with every setting until you find something that works so for me shadow usually works the best that is perfect I am now perfectly in the green screen with no issues something else that you can try if that doesn't work is using the pedestal um, that can sometimes really help also the choke under matte cleanup so if you get those really horrible green screen lines around your hair or something like that the choke can work really well if you do use choke i highly recommend also using soften which kind of blurs out the edges and makes it less harsh so that's literally all that i do for my green screen and then i'll just drag my image or my movie file underneath and that's it it's super super easy I do feel like this video is very long already and that is honestly all of my main tips and tricks that I would use to kind of add humor to my videos. I was so much worse at editing when I first started and now I feel like I really have the hang of it. I know what moments to look out for to make a video funnier. Not all my videos are funny, like of course, and it's so subjective, but it's practice, practice, practice and you know, play around with the program, watch a bunch of videos on how to edit and you will get there.